Welcome to Our Energy Matters with Anthony Manna and Dina Marie. That's me. <laughs> Hello, and that and that's I. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> and and we're together, I'm Anthony, yeah. and here we are, and we meet weekly, and uh, we talk about our spiritual progress, and also we talk about our health and our wellness and our sadness and our happiness and most of all we talk about lifting our spirits and so what i do is i have the privilege of working through dina marie's book i'll give you the title in just a little bit and uh finding what illuminates me along the way and then i come up with a piece of writing uh, and we're collecting these over time. This is our 47th episode. There goes Absolutely. the Harley. Could you hear the Harley Davidson? No. Oh, good, no. good. good okay. Good. <laughs> so I start off by saying, Ben Vido and Bon dia. Welcome and good day to our Portuguese viewers. How to heal blocked chakras. I rejoiced in finding a luminous treasure trove of spark-tested manifestations of healing, hope, and redemptive freedom. I almost want to say refreshment in an enlightened book by Dina Marie with the enticing title, Our Energy Matters, The Art of Crystal Reading, followed by another subtitle where seekers like me can learn how to manifest their heartfelt intentions. And I want to start there. Heartfelt intentions. Dina Marie, Dina Marie, tell your seekers, your clients, the people you deal with, um, your students, in search of loving grace, self-love, and healing about the empowerment sustained by heartfelt intentions. Well, we were talking and the book, Our Energy Matters, was supposed to be called The Art of Crystal Reading. And I was riding my bike and I had this, oh, Our Energy Matters. But what does that mean? The higher chakras are your intangibles. So it's your thoughts, your creativity, imagination. And the lower chakras are your physical world, your relationship, your body, uh, your physical things that surround you. So, and the heart is the altar. So if I have a lot of ideas and I put my heart into it, normally you're gonna manifest heaven on earth, right? You're gonna manifest something beautiful, like a garden or a work with kids in a classroom teaching. I mean, those are kind of what the heart is all about. Community, art, uh, music, anything creative. If our heart is not open, we'll create things, but it might be um, not good for anyone. <laughs> You can see, you know, politicians, I don't think their hearts are open in. And when you see them talk, they don't touch their heart. They talk, but they do not touch their heart. So if you want to know if someone's telling the truth, turn the television down and watch them touch their heart. <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> and, and you know, it was the only time I've seen a politician do it was when Al Gore was talking about the environment a long time ago, a long time ago before he ran for president. But he was really, he meant what he said, and I went to visit, I, I saw him in person talk about the environment, and it, it was meaningful to him. So I think that if your heart's into something, then it's going to benefit other people and yourself. So you and I talk about self-love all the time yes. and practicing it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so in that space, sometimes we we go away from that business of self-love and sometimes we go away into a very darkened space or I don't even want to use the word dark and it's just distant from ourselves well, you know and we're disconnected from our higher chakras which is remember you and I looking up it's connecting to something higher than ourselves it's focusing on the beauty of this world and using your inner voice your intuition and, and creativity to manifest something that's beautiful, you know? And when we're looking, and you and I have just gone through a little dark spell where we were looking down, I didn't feel good physically. So I, I needed to do some self care and take care of myself. You were probably uh, giving energy to someone you love. 
So you and I were kind of in a dark space, but you went outside and noticed you were looking down and then noticed the beauty around you and lifted yeah. your spirits. Yeah, I was in the garden and I, I realized that I was, I was occupied by the responsibility of watering. And, and I just stopped, I put the hose down and I, I just looked around. I mean, I'm surrounded by eight acres of greenery. It's almost, what a blessing, what a gift. And it, it woke me up. I wanna make a leap here, an intuitive leap. My intention so often filters through my soul, mind, body disturbances, my blockages, my static, sedated, deadened, fractured self sense. Oh my lord! <laughs> I need I need you and a psychiatrist in the same room. In your in your book, you offer blessed guidance, heartfelt solace, your spiritually endowed awareness gained from your own spiritual journey experiments and the saving grace of your healing powers gained, I do believe, and you say this in your stories, through guiding, teaching, awakening, or your seekers, your clients who come to you spiritually broken, folks of any age, status, longing, and needs, whose energy centers, the chakras that distribute universal life force energy throughout the body, soul, and mind are bogged down, overloaded, damaged, blocked. Like me, your seekers gasp, grasp, your generous manner of helping chakra block beings to recover self-worth, self-love, re-enlightened self-confidence and their worthiness. And now I want to do a drum roll, dun, 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 please. For this old guy coming to understand the chakras, and let me repeat, these spark endowed energy centers. And I'm getting encouraged to welcome and rediscover my beautiful life and the divine imagination and presence in my soul because I work through your illuminations about these chakras. You say, there are seven of these major energy centers in the human body and hundreds of minor ones, and they receive, assimilate, and distribute energy throughout our energetic fields, our auras. So follow me to the back of your book. Okay, <laughs> Lady Grace. A sanctuary titled Chakra Cheat Sheet, where Lady Grace invites her seekers and her clients to place car crystals on corresponding colors. It's all there. Right side column is the marvel of longed for and cherished color crystal chakra convergences from the crown chakra to the root chakra. So take us there, Lady Grace. Tell us about the color crystal and chakra convergence in the splendor of the crown chakra. Well, the crown chakra is when your light bulb's on and you, you look up a lot. You say, aha, the aha, wow, I got that. That's really a good idea. And after talking to you today, my light bulb's back on. <laughs> you know, when we're looking down, that chakra is closed. So, you know, uh, my friend just gave me this one. It's a clear quartz crystal Ooh, look. <laughs> yeah. I need that one. But that's like, you know, a star. It's like you, you can imagine either a light bulb or a star over the top of your head. Uh, that's when people just have great ideas, original ideas, and you keep that baby open by setting your intentions and counting your blessings every day. That's it. And then, then I say, on the left side column, you explore the disturbance, disturbances and the blockages of anyone, anyone seeking your blessed guidance and heart and solace spiritually endowed awareness of static, sedated, deadened, fractured selfhood. Tell us about the crown chakra blockages. Well, you know, the other day we've had such really gray weather. I, I used the word hopeless. Hopelessness is when you look down and shake your head and you just can't see the light. And we couldn't see the light. It's been, it's, this is the first day it's really been blue sky, um, but we can't see the stars. We can't see the moon. Uh, you know, and then you start shaking your head, looking down, you disconnect. I think a couple days I didn't count my blessings, but it's usually when you, um, remember Debbie Downer? Oh yeah. 
when you focus on everything that's broken, you watch the news, you talk about everything in the world that's going bad or wrong. And so like, again, you just want to focus on the beauty, you know, I, I, and all I had at the time I'm dog sitting. <laughs> so I was sitting, sitting outside on a, a lawn and at a, in a great vineyard with two dogs that made me look up. They cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, there we go right away. What I say, what I say to you here is, there, there's also hope, isn't there? Uh, because hope sent through the healing prescriptions right there next to the block, blocked uh, spirit. So, what about uh, prescriptions for the crown? You know, what what do you tell us we can do to remedy those blockages for the crown? Well, I think I'm overdue because I've been staying at another house for a week. I need to sit down and, and write down the, the, the blessings in my life, L write down all the amazing human beings I know, focus on what's working in my life. And then uh, like ordering at a restaurant on the other side of the paper, I just write down some of the things I might need some help with. So what do I need help with? My health. I want to be healthier. I want to be out in nature more. Now my foot's working again. You know, I want to spend quality time with my family. So, and, and write it down, let the universe know. And then I want to make extra money doing fun things, like staying <laughs> at a winery with a bunch of dogs. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing too, always, always, I find in your book, uh, when we go to page 52 to 53, you know where I'm going, right? To the prescriptions, the remedies. And it, they just go on and on. And I, there's hope. Hope looms loud and clear among those remedies. Hear me tell of your accessible, practical, doable crown shock or prescriptions. Praise for the remedies you prescribe for each chakra. And if I go there, uh, and if I go to the crown and the heart, well, let me go to the heart. You know, you say, let's see, and the crown, the first chakra, and the seventh is the seventh is the knowing, is the crown. And you say, and I love when you say the seventh chakra is knowing. And, and that's awareness, isn't it? And you say, what are some of the things you can do if you're blocked? Connect with a higher power. Oh, we talked about prayer today talk to an angel ah that's <laughs> wonderful I, I i had to do that my friend was very ill and i had to do that when he was in the hospital meditate be still listen God, i don't want to stop you know what i, mean? I want to stop at each one and think okay i can do this you know and it's possible trust your inner knowing belong and connect with others think lofty thoughts prophesize about the future oh yeah that's nice and that i think that's tied up with intention too isn't it when you think about that ask questions and ponder look at the stars pray for yourself and others we talked about that so much today and you know we talked about and i said it's not necessarily talking about only about um a, a, a god but also a goddess and the spirits and you know wherever we can find solace in the universe, uh, write down your goals and ask your higher self to help you achieve them. Think positive affirmations. Listen to music from India. <laughs> I love that because I lived in the Middle East and when I hear the music that I heard when I was living there, it takes me to a, a really to a much better place because I, I see so many people dancing and the Greeks love to dance to their music. Wear vile or white, eat white foods or fast. It's, you know, and I, I just think that um, when I say to you here in our next episode, let's continue exploring these chakra, chakra blockages and the ways you, Lady Grace, you, the celestial alchemist. God, that's wonderful to say that. <laughs> Demonstrate how to heal them, how to align them with positive life altering nourishment. And I say, alleluia, alleluia. You know, the prescriptions are doable. They're workable. And, and the way you list them, because I mean, you know, you don't, um, you don't make them abstract in the sense that, they, that you have to get a degree from MIT 
in order to, you know, lead a spiritual life, you know, and um, it's so actually playful. It's playful. And the more we play, the more you connect to your higher self. I, and I haven't had a lot of play after I hurt my ankle and I had some things go on. Right. So just having the child, even if it's say like Jesus be more like a child, huh, play, yeah. have fun. Have fun. Great. I love it. That's what a great place to end. So I, I, I you know, and I, I really do like the idea of continuing with the blockages and with the healing power that you talk so beautifully about folks. If you want to move closer to Dina Marie's wisdom, then listen to her weekly radio show, Lift Your Spirits, on 11.50 a.m. KKNW. And she, sometimes she solo goes, sometimes she introduces poets and writers and uh, other writers and um, a lot of musicians and philosophers. I mean, it's, uh, it's a great place to go for healing power. Her website, dina-marie.com, if you go there, you'll see a lot about uh, what, what, she has, what she has done, what she does to bring people to her solace uh, in workshops and the labyrinth and so many other ways. She is also very active on Facebook, daily chakra insight into chakra energy blockage and prescriptions, startling photographs of the island she inhabits, and prayerful advice about self-care, and also information about her workshops and her courses. And lately she's been offering free workshops. How do you like that? <laughs> My website for an interview with Dina Marie is anthonymanabooks.com. And if you go to the media section there, you'll find the Podbean podcast and you'll see an interview with Dina Marie and many other people that I've interviewed along the way here that are, um, let's call it very spiritually uplifting in every way, shape and form. And also parents, if you're interested in coming to my, my website, you'll see a lot of information about young children, tweens and teens uh, for writing and reading book lists and also writing activities, et cetera. So, Another time that we've met, Dina Marie, thank you so much. And, um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll meet again soon, I hope. And, and I just want to say thank you. You are such a blessing. You really are such a blessing. And today, just by us meeting again, I just feel my, my light went back on. So I'm going to go have fun. <laughs> yeah, oh, wonderful. No, I love that. I love that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to end, but I'm going to go... Um, Thanks a lot. And I mean, I feel the same way. I mean, I just, I, I feel like you keep reminding me about why looking up is more than a physical entity, you know? Mm -hmm.